Are you looking for a high quality tent that will not take over your space or break the bank? Welcome to the Hippie Geeks. Let's put together the AC Infinity Cloud Lab 733 and look at its features and build quality. As always, when unboxing a grow tent, make sure to not cut too deeply into the box when you are first opening it up. AC Infinity is smart enough to put an extra layer of cardboard in there, but if you cut too deep, you will put a slice in the tent itself, which would be a shame. First up, you will find the bag that is going to have both of the booklets that they send with every tent, a bag of stickers that are actually pretty cool, and then the mounting plate for one of their fan controllers that we will be installing later in the video, the plate that is, not the controller, as mine has not arrived yet. Next up, we are going to move the tent fabric out of the way so that we can remove all of the various bars and corners that will make up the framework skeleton of the tent itself. They are all packaged really well and should arrive to your door without any damage or scratches. Now it is time to go ahead and get everything unpackaged so that we can get this thing assembled, and this is going to lead to one of my few disappointments with this tent, the packaging. I understand why they are using the plastic separators to keep the bars from banging together, and why they are using vacuum sealed wrap to keep the bundles in place and protected. I just wish that they could cut at least some of this plastic out of the equation, as there is already far too much of it out there in the world being produced. When assembling the base of the tent frame, make sure that you have the plastic feet pointed down, and when you are assembling the top, make sure to have the plastic pointed up, as that will help to protect the tent fabric once the entire thing is assembled. For both the base and the top of the frame, you are going to want the pieces that are marked with the letter A and that do not have any numbers on them. They are also going to be the shortest bars out of the bunch, so it should be pretty easy to identify them as you assemble the framework. Once the base of the frame is put together, it is time to unwrap the remaining bars so that we can attach the uprights. The bars all have numbers on them, with the ones that will attach directly to the base having the numbers 1 and 2 on them, and the upper section having the numbers 3, 4, and 5. This will give you an easy reference as to the height of your plants in the tent, as the numbers correspond to the height from the floor and feet, which I think is a really nice touch and will actually be pretty useful. Now that the uprights are attached, it is time to finish up the framework by attaching the top corners and crossbars, which will bring it all together and get us ready to install the fabric. Again, make sure that you are putting the plastic nubs that are on all of the corners facing up when you are attaching them, as that will also make sure that it all connects easily. Now it is time to tackle the hardest part of putting together a grow tent, getting the fabric on the framework, hopefully without ripping it. You would actually have a pretty hard time ripping one of these as they use a nice thick material that feels very solid, but I am sure that if you are too rough with it, there could be some damage. The first thing to do is to find the zipper pulls. They will be somewhere in the middle of the tent, and once you find them, you need to unzip them each in opposite directions until the entire tent has been unzipped and is ready to be put on the framework. I am going to start out this time by putting the top square onto the framework first, and you can tell which side is the top because of the vent hole that it has, and the floor section will be completely solid. I am going to start out by pulling the fabric up over the back of the tent, and then working it forward until I can get all four corners pulled down nice and snug so that they won't move, and the corners of the framework are all of the way up into the corners of the fabric. The nice thing about the CloudLab 733 is that it is a really easy size to work with, and in this space, I actually even have a few inches above the frame, so it is a lot easier to put on there than it was with the 4x4 tent that we checked out last time. After that, it is going to be time to get the bottom section tucked under the framework, and you are going to want to make sure that all of the side material is up and out of the way, as it may initially want to follow the bottom piece, which will make it impossible to do correctly. Just take your time and work the fabric under the tent towards the front corners, and it will get in there pretty easily. My camera is going to die right at the end of this process, so we won't get to see it finished up, but you can see what I am in the process of doing here, and if you really need to see it, check out the 4x4 tent video that we posted not too long ago, as it is very similar to this one. Once that is taken care of, all that is left to do is finish zipping up the sides of the tent, both with the top and the bottom zipper pulls. This should be very easy to do, and if you find yourself having to fight to get them to move, Stop and take a look at the inside of the tent as it is very likely that there is something wrong, and you may have to adjust either the top or bottom sections to get them in the correct place. Once you have them zipped all of the way to the front of the tent, you don't want to close it up completely yet as we have a couple of more things to set up, but we are very close to having it completely set up. Now it is time to get the controller mounting plate installed into the front of the tent, and this one is pretty easy to do. 
There are four hooks on the back of the metal plate, and you just need to match those up with the straps that are on the upper right corner of the front of the tent. I still haven't received my controller to show you how to hook that up, but once it gets here, we will be making a video about that as well. Looking inside of the tent on the bottom, you can see the three rectangular vents that most tents come with these days that are currently covered, but you can roll them up to let air in. On each side of the tent, there is a six inch exhaust port, and in the back left corner, there is a single four inch port. You can also just barely see the bottom of the doors that are on the left and right sides of the tent, and these will make it super easy to get in here and work on your plants from every angle. As we look up the back side of the tent, you can see that there are actually three four inch ports, one at the bottom, one in the middle, and one at the top, giving you a lot of options for where to route the cords for your various equipment. Moving up to the top of the tent, there are going to be three more six inch ports, one on each of the sides of the tent and one in the top, along with that third four inch port that we were just looking at. With this many options, you should be able to route everything exactly how you want to fit the space that you have. Looking across the middle of the tent now, and this is going to give you a better look at the doors that are on each side of the tent. I really like that they add these in, as it can be really hard to reach all the way into the back of a tent from the front door when the canopy is really full, so this just makes it a lot easier to deal with things and see how your plants are doing from every angle. Next up, we are going to get the center support bars installed, and they have yet again sent four bars with this tent, which will give you an incredible number of options of where to hang things in a tent this size. It is also going to give you a lot of support for the roof if you are one of the folks that likes to store things up there. I know that I have stored things on top of the tent at various times, and this just gives you so much support for that kind of thing. Finally, the last thing that we need to do is to put the tray into the bottom of the tent, and again they have included their single piece white bottom tray, and I absolutely love these things. I have had these bottom trays leak in multiple tents before, as they are almost always sewn at the corners and are also almost never watertight. This one should be able to hold water until you get a chance to clean it up, and just seems like a better option overall. Well, that is just about everything there is to look at inside of the AC Infinity Cloud Lab 733. This is an exceptionally well-built grow tent, and I love that they are using the one-inch steel tube in all of its construction. The extra supports in the roof are something you don't see in a lot of tents these days, and there is an incredible number of ways to route your cables through all of the provided ports that they have. That doesn't even take into account how much I love that there are doors in each side of the tent for easy access, as it really can be a pain to get in there when you have to work on the back of a large plant. Finally, the most exciting part is the price of this tent, as it is currently only $139 on their website, and if you use our coupon code, it will give you 15% off of the price, bringing it to only $118, which is an incredible price for what you are getting. A big thank you to AC Infinity for supporting the channel, and if you want to check out the Cloud Lab 844 or any of their other gear for yourself, make sure to click on the link to their website in the description or pinned comment down below, and use the discount code GEEKS at checkout to receive 15% off your entire order.